Hey guys, welcome back to another Unreal Engine 4 tutorial. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to create so that it is raining around and on the player. So this is quite a good way to make it not laggy as you're not actually going to be having physical rain. It's just something for the player to see. And so I'm going to be having this. So it's visually raining, you can hear it raining, and you can toggle this on and off, which you can obviously implement into a more dynamic weather system. So it looks and sounds something like this. So we have the rain coming down on the screen, and then we can move around. Obviously, it still comes down and we can hear it like that. And if I press E, we can toggle it off. You see, it looks a lot better. And then if we turn it back on, it looks something like this. So I'll show you how to do this. Obviously, you don't have to do it when you press E. You can do it by something else. This is just how I've got it set up for testing. Again, you can set this up in a proper weather system or something like that. So I'll show you how to do that now. So our first step is going to be to actually create this rain material. So what I've done is I've already imported the rain text that I have and also some rain audio which I'll leave a download link to these in the description down below. So once you've imported those, making sure that the audio is a WAV 16 bit and this texture is obviously a texture like this, it's just an image. What I'm gonna do is select the texture, right click on it and then create a material. And I'm just gonna call this rain underscore matte. You can name this whatever you like. It doesn't matter too much. And then we're just gonna open that up straight away. Now what we're gonna do is just move the texture sample out a little bit like so. And over the bottom left, under Material Domain, we're going to change it from Surface to Post Process as we're going to be using the Post Process volume to be doing this. And we can just disconnect that from the base color like so. Then what we're going to do is right click and get a Scene Texture. So Scene Texture like that. And under the Scene Texture ID down here, we're going to change it from Scene Color to Post Process Input 0, meaning that we can now use this material in the Post Process if we wanted and it will work properly. And obviously we do want that. So the color of that is gonna go into the emissive color there as we only want to be messing about with the color and how it looks, not the size and all that. And it's like I say, emissive color as it's post-process. And then what we're gonna be doing to get the texture sample in there, which is obviously our rain, we want to be adding this to the texture coordinates. So what we're gonna do is get a texture coordinate. So right click get texture coordinate like so. And what this is doing is it's gonna be putting it in the world essentially. So we have that properly like that. We're gonna come out of this and get an add. So an add like so, and that's going into A. B is gonna be the red value for our texture sample like so. And then the return value of the add will go in the UVs for our scene texture like that. What this is doing is it's gonna be adding our texture sample to our texture coordinates and putting that in post process. Now what we also want to do, so another step here, just to give this a bit more customization to make it look a bit nicer, is out of this red here, so where it's going into the add, if we come out of this and get a multiply first, and then put the return value into the B there, and then if we right click and get a scalar parameter, so scalar parameter, and I'm just gonna call this strength, or whatever you like, so it's just how strong the rain is, but you can change the name of that to be whatever you like, and I'll plug that into B. And so what this is going to be doing is this will allow us to change this value here whenever we want and however we want. And like I say, this is going to be multiplying by the texture sample. So if it's zero, then the texture won't be there anymore. So the rain will be gone. And obviously it's going to be adding to the texture coordinates again, going back in there. So all this is doing is allowing us to change how visible and how strong the rain is before we put it in there. And now the final step in here is to actually make the rain fall. Because at the moment, what this is doing is it's just putting the rain texture on there. But we want to make it fall as well. So if we come out of the UVs with the texture sample and get a panner, so a panner like that. And with the speed, we want speed Y to be minus one or just a minus number so it's falling down. But we also want to be able to change this with parameters as well so we can customize this however we want. So to do that, we're going to come out of the speed here. And we're going to get an append vector under the math like that. You might get this error, but that's just because we haven't put any inputs in there just yet. And then what we're going to do is get another scalar parameter, so a scalar parameter like that, call this one speed x, plug that into the A, you get that again because we haven't finished yet, and duplicate that, plug it into the B, and I'll change this to speed y. And now that should work. The default value for speed y, I'm going to set to minus one. Speed x, I'll leave it zero as I don't want to be moving it on the x-axis at all, because that is obviously horizontal, which rain doesn't fall in, unless obviously you have a bit of wind, which you can about with that and then the strength i will put a default value of one but we can change that as well and so now this is our material set up for our rain. so we now have this set up perfectly like so and so because we have the scalar parameters we can customize this however we want to get it perfect for us so we can just apply that and save it as well and then if we close that like so or you can see in this preview here that's what it's going to look like so we have the rain falling down and then we can just minimize that and what we're going to do is then right click on the rain material again and then create material instance. And this is how we can then change the scalar parameters. So then we can just create that, I'll call it rain mat inst, and then open that up again straight away. Then if we just tick these variables here, these scalar parameter values, we can mess about with these. So if we change the speed x, it's gonna be moving along the x like so. And then if we change the speed y, 
it's going to be changing how fast or how slow it's moving so you can get it really fast if it's really heavy or quite slow so I'm going to set it back to minus one and then the strength again is just how strong and how visible it is so like that if I put it to zero you can't see it if I put it to one it's like that so I'm going to leave it as one but again, you can change these values to get it perfect for you. So I'm going to save and close those. And then what we want to do is put this in the post process. So if we find our post process volume and select it like that, or if you don't have one, you can go to volumes and then get a post process down here, post process volume and scale this up to be how big you want. Or if you want it to just cover the entire map. So everywhere in your level, you can scroll down until you find infinite extent unboarded like so. And if you just take that, then it will cover the whole map instead of just where you have it. But I already have a post process scaled up to the size I want as we get that by default. So I'll be using that. And then in this post process, so in the details, what we're going to do is search for materials. And then under this post process material array here, we're just going to hit a plus element to add another array. We're going to select choose and get an asset reference. And then we're going to select our rain material instance and hit this arrow here to use that. And now you can see we have this rain on the screen like so. Now, if you don't like how it looks, open up the instance like this and then we can just mess about with these values again so that is why we made them scalar parameters so we can easily change them so i might just lower the strength a little bit like so i think that looks a little bit better for me so we can then leave it as that so now we have the rain falling down the screen so in front of the player now we want to add the audio so to do that we're just going to open our character blueprint so mine's third person vp blueprints third person character and then go straight over to the viewport here add component and we're just going to add an audio so get audio like that and I'm just going to raise this to be a little bit above the player. It doesn't matter too much, but that's just where I want it to be. So it looks a bit nicer. And I'm just going to put in the rain sound effect that I have like so. So that's the rain sound I have. So that's the one I'm going to be using. So we can compile, save that and go straight up to the event graph. And then what I'm going to be doing here is this is where we're going to be toggling this rain audio on and off. So what I'm going to do is create a new variable. We call this is raining question mark. So we know if it is raining or not. So we know whether to play the sound and I'm going to right click and I'm actually going to add a custom event. And this is so we can call this from different blueprints. So in a different blueprint, we want to turn off the rain, we can do that. So I'm just going to call this toggle rain audio, like so. Hold down B, left click and get a branch after that and just plug that in there. So again, this means we can call it wherever we want. And then for the condition of this branch, I'm going to get the is raining boolean we've just made. Then I want to get a reference to the audio component we've just added. So just drag and drop it in there, come out of this and we want to get a play. So play node like that. And then also come out of this again and get a stop. Now we can play and stop the audio like so. True is going to go into the stop. Actually, I did that the wrong way around. True goes into stop. False goes into play. So when we call this event, if it's raining, so if raining is true, we're going to stop the raining. If raining is false, we're going to play the raining. So we're going to start raining. And then we just want to set these booleans again afterwards to be according to this. So obviously stop is false. Play is true like so. So that is how that should work. So when we call this event, if it's raining, it will stop raining. If it isn't raining, it will start raining. So it should look like that. And obviously this raining here is just for the audio. And then for the actual visual side, what we're gonna do is close this and go to the level blueprint. So we go to blueprints, open level blueprint. What I'm gonna do here is because like I say, I'm doing this off of an E key just for testing, but you can do this in a dynamic weather system if you want, or if you go into a certain area, anything like that, or you don't even need to do this. This is just for toggling it on and off. So what I'm going to do is get an E keyboard event just for testing, like I said. Out of pressed, what I'm going to do is get a flip-flop. So like I say, toggle on and off. So get a flip-flop like that. And then I'm going to get a reference to the post-process volume. So if I just minimize that, drag and drop the post-process in there and maximize this again. And what I'm going to do is come out of this and set blend weight like so. Plug that into the A, leave that as zero. So the first time we do this, it's setting it to zero so it's not there. If you have it as not raining by default, you want this as one. So the first one we have is going to be turning it off for me. Then I can just duplicate that like so, plug the target in there and set this to one so that now and plug that to B. And so now this one is going to be enabling it again. And out of this, what I want to do is cast to the third person character or just my character that we have. And I'm going to, as the object, obviously get player character like so and get another one off of these so we have one off both of them like that and then as third person character what we want to do is just toggle the rain audio for both of these so just toggle rain audio so actually i could probably just do this off one so we they both go in there like that so toggle rain audio for both of them like so so when you press e it's going to disable this 
If you press it again, it will enable it. And obviously as well, on both of them, toggle the rain audio. So obviously then it is going to be disabling or enabling the audio. So we can compile, save that, minimize. Now this should be working. So we can hit play to test this. We have the rain, we have the audio. This looks and sounds great. Obviously you can change how this looks with different textures. So if you have a different rain texture, it might look better for you. If I press E, it turns off. There we hear the audio didn't quite work, but the rain has visually gone and now it's come back again. So let's find out why the audio didn't work. And I know why actually is because we didn't set it to be true by default. So we have it as raining already. So we need to change this default value to true. So now set that if it's raining already, set it to true. If it isn't, set it to false. So now this should work. So it's raining, if we press E, it stops raining. So now we can see that visually there's no more rain and we can't hear it anymore either. And then if we hit it again, it then comes back on. As you can see, it looks a little bit darker when it is raining and then gets nice and sunny when it's not anymore. And that is because we are just disabling the post process completely. So if you have other things in your post process, you might want to do this part a little differently, but on the whole, this should work very well for you. It's like I say, it gets dark and then it gets bright when it's not raining. So I think that'll be it for this video is we've done everything we want to do. We set it up so that it is raining around the player like so, so everywhere they look, it's raining. We also have the audio of it raining as well. And then also if we, we can toggle this on and off and you can do this depending on whatever you like. So on a keyboard event, on a box collision, on a weather system, anything like that. I'm just showing you how to do it. And then we can toggle it back on again. So we have the visual and audio aspects of the rain. So thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I hope you found it helpful. And if you did, make sure to like and subscribe down below. So thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.